starting in three two one welcome to the nerd cave discussions i am one of your hosts zach dykes joined along with the new bearded sultan trey price and the recently freed genie of the lamp Derek daniel how you doing guys great man how are you magical <laughs> just <laughs> magical <laughs> yeah. oh i'm glad i'm glad i'm glad yeah. well beard is sultan so they, do they rub my beard for the three wishes no you're you're free like you don't have to like you rub your own mm. beard now yeah you okay yeah we, we're not gonna get. We're not gonna go down that rabbit hole because there's a whole, <laughs> whole weirdness that is awaiting beyond that uh, genie of the lamp. But this episode is brought to you by our wonderful patrons. You can become part of the ship, part of the exclusive crew by going to Patreon.com/slash/NerdCave, just like our wonderful crew members, the first mate Brandon Hicks, our helmsman the conductor, our gunners Richard Newell, Daniel Sanford, Rushing Waters Yoga, Marilyn James, and Brittany the Granny B. Harrison and our awesome deckhand Martin Sager. Cue the whoop whoops. If you don't have the extra bucks to toss our way, you can support us by going over to the Epic Games and you can use our Epic Creator code in the Epic Game Store or in game purchases like Fortnite or Rocket League on any device that is eligible to use our Epic Game Creator code. Use Nerd Cave at checkout to support us with every purchase on the Epic Games Store. This is the Nerd Cave discussion where we discuss the latest and the greatest movies and shows that you need to know. You can watch us live over on twitch.tv slash Nerd Cave Network, or you can watch the show later on youtube.com slash Nerd Cave Network. Make sure to hit the follow and the subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything and like it so more people will see the video. In this episode of The Mandalorian, was, wasn't was this show called The Book of Boba Fett? I thought it was. It's supposed to be. It's what the, that's what the uh, hot title says. Like, when when did we get a different author? Like, like when? <laughs> like, who's, who's? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, like, just, I'm just confused at this point. I'm just confused. Is Dave <laughs> Filoni still over this? Like, what, what's happening? Uh, yeah, I think Filoni was tired of not making money, so he's like, eh, yeah. I'm just gonna... Now let's just make this Mando season 2.5. It'll be all right. I mean, like, is it's this... kind of what everyone wanted anyway. Is this season three of the Mando, or is this like the Ahsoka pilot show? Like, <laughs> like... that's Yeah, like... It's both. What are you talking about? <laughs> now, wait, have... wait, wait. It's still Book of Boba Fett because Boba Fett nodded in this episode. Oh, and you're that right. One, and, that, yes. and that one scene, yeah. it was like... Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. It would be like Pride and Prejudice <laughs> with only one scene of Mr. Darcy in it. Like th that would be like the same. Yeah. <laughs> like it would just be like yeah. Mr. Darcy I, just like one nod, and that's it. Pride and Prejudice. I, I feel like we need the we need the uh, the meme of um, I don't even know what movie it was, but it's Leonardo DiCaprio when he's like pointing at the thing like right there, right there, and like <laughs> oh yeah, the, the meme shows up and nods. Everyone's like, look, there he is, Bubba Fett. Bubba yep. Fett. Yeah, yeah. It's like there's Waldo. <laughs> Um, and Amy said, "Well, when everyone wants to see the baby, you know, and you know, that's what his show is going to be called, the baby. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> the baby. Not to be confused with the rapper. Yeah, not, right. Not the baby. The baby. The baby. Well, in this episode of Book of Boba Fett, the episode's name is From the Desert Comes a Stranger. Does there he were though? definitely some strangers." <laughs> Well, you know, in the when the eyes of a ranger are upon you. <laughs> yeah, I know. Anything you do, he's going to see. When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie. That's a bounty hunter. See, I was going to keep going with the Walker Texas Ranger song, but yeah. I know, but I had to stop it. I had to stop it while we were ahead. When you're in Texas, look behind you. <laughs> Burdick's got me, because that's where Rangers going to be. And if Mr. Darcy was made to be out to be Mr. Bingley. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. So let's jump into this episode. Here's the non-spoiler. This is the spoiler-free review of episode six. Derek, take it away. 
No, why are you looking at me? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Trey, take away our spoiler free review. All right, spoiler okay. free review. Book of Boba Fett slash The it. Mandalorian <laughs> slash Ahsoka slash Grogu the Baby is a good show. Go watch it. Yeah. Now it's time for spoilers. <laughs> there we go. See, Trey knows what's up. Trey, Trey knows literally what's up. been doing it every week. Just like, yeah, it's good. Watch it. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on. All right. We. Well, I've had to miss the last few weeks, but right. at least I came in on a good episode. You did. You did. God, you. Sh- oof. That one episode. <laughs> yeah. See, Derek comes on when like the episodes that anger me. <laughs> like the, yeah. that's when Derek's the Power on the Rangers show. and the speeder and the speeder scene. <laughs> <clears throat> Amy's been Amy's throwing shade hardcore like Pride and Prejudice style. I love it. I love it. Mm-hmm. I do declare. <laughs> I do declare. I do declare. So let's get into this. Uh, we open up this episode. We got a t- Tatooine spice deal. They slinging the, that yeah. crack around. They slinging it around. And uh, old Marshall Dillon rolls up on him and he's like, hey, boys. He's like, you're not welcome here. He's like, I didn't see what's in that thing over there, but uh, you got two choices. You can, uh, you can leave, or you can come in cold. Pretty much. Yep. <laughs> you know, we don't take kindly to your types around here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I like that's come back the way you game. Like this one was a very western like show. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Like anything that was Especially on Tatooine. The end. Anything that was on Tatooine was pretty western like. I kept waiting right. for the. Like any moment, we're just gonna like, yeah, yeah. Cool hand, Luke Sundance. Yeah. You know, Butch, you Cassidy Sundance kid. You know, all of those things. So we, I know you're asking yourself, did I fire three bolts or four? <laughs> the real question is, you need to ask is, do blasters even work that way? <laughs> <laughs> uh, exactly, exactly. Uh, Marilyn says. Filoni just wants all of his animated characters to come live action at this point. Well, don't we all? Yeah. I do. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for real. <laughs> I'm just waiting. Um, it's not his character, but I'm waiting for Thrawn. I'm waiting. Like mm-hmm. they mentioned him season mm-hmm. two. Oh, God, Mandalorian. Yes. Mm-hmm. I can't wait for that. I'm hoping for some Ezra. Like I, I need straight up Sopranos meets Game of Thrones Thrawn show. That's what I need. Mm. I need it to be cutthroat. I need it to be gritty. And I want people to be like, all right, the kids don't watch this Star Wars. This is this is big boy Star Wars, I you know? That's might, what I need. I think we might be getting that with Andor, though. But quite quite yeah. possibly. We're, we're getting quite possibly. We're getting off we're getting off we're getting ahead of ourselves. Yeah. Off topic here. But Amy brings up this point because we were watching it together. She thought the thought the dude talking about uh Marshall Cobb Vanth. Uh, was about to be dirty and yeah. steal the spice for himself, and I was Ooh. like, I was like, okay, this is weird. But then we see him just knock it over and let the tip it over, let the the winds bring it into the dunes, and uh, you know, uh, some bath is out there going to be high. <laughs> that's true. Well, man, that sun is high, man. <laughs> I love sand. It's cool sand here, man. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's like I just um, someone draw that shirt, please. <laughs> like, <laughs> <it's> like, <laughs> <laughs> like um, a bantha, <laughs> like a bantha. <laughs> I'm oh. not gonna lie, though. <laughs> A part of me, when he kicked over that uh, crate of spice and it starts blowing to the winds, a part of me was like, that was so much money. Like, I know. <laughs> yeah. Like, it was like so you much. Have, well, even the pikes and you Dan. You realize how much you could have bought for the town? Yeah. Yes. And Dan even points this out. The spice was worth more than his entire town. Like, a pike said that to him. He's like, this yeah. is what, It's like. Well, you can either die right here and I take the spice and the money. <laughs> like, it's like, yeah. you're the smart yeah. one. Or you can leave with the money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, you know, he wasn't, a, he wasn't a jive turkey. I, I took that from uh, that jive turkey. Took it from Amy. I look like cinnamon powder. Well, you know, uh, you can, uh, we talked about cinnamon last week, uh, Derek. You remember? <laughs> the the poo cinnamon. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> anyway, guys, I'm getting off track here. Trey, I'm gonna need you to calm down. I'm gonna need you to calm down, okay? 
Hey, I'm just drinking my spice tea, everyone. Mm-hmm. It's all, it's all good. Like a bantha. Like a bantha. So Mando, he uh he offs and travels off. Mm-hmm. He travels mm-hmm. off and he's like he's going to meet his friend. He's going to meet his friend. If you didn't get nothing from the last episode, we got yeah. an episode for you. Yeah, Derek texts me. He's like, "Man, this 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 episode's really dope." And I responded back. I was like, "Is this another Mandalorian episode? Another Mando <laughs> episode?" And he's like, 50 50 more like sixty forty, but you know." And I was like, "Okay, like, yeah, I, I would even be like seventy five. It was 25. more of a blend, but we still got way too more Mando. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah. yeah. And we got a bunch of other cameos too. Like when he lands. And we see this like, and I'm like, R2. That's yeah. so great. Um, that was nice. you know, to see. And then you see the, and then it's like, all right, we see R2. Do we see Luke? Do we see him doing the little trainee trainings with baby Grogu? Um, and we see a bunch of spider bots building the temple, which I have not seen. Uh, the I saw episode seven, but I did not see episodes eight and nine. I'm going to rectify that here in the coming months. I'm going to sit down and watch all the movies. Um, May the fourth is a good day to do that. You know, I don't know if I'll have off that day, but you know, yeah. that's, a, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, but what did we, how did you like to see, how did you guys like to see like the beginnings of what, what leads to, leads to episodes or the, the sequel trilogy? I thought it was cool. You know, the ant machines building the Jedi temple and everything, you know, I, I was hoping, I was hoping, I know the one in this is not on Yavin and all of that, but I was like, you know, getting to see that kind of reminded me of, uh, you know, the Dark Disciple book, you know, the Jedi Academy books and everything, the trilogy, uh, you yeah. know, I never finished Dark Disciple, but, you know, shout out to <laughs> to that book, <laughs> finished Dark Disciple. Or finished, yeah, it was Dark Disciple. Anyway. Oh, good, I didn't finish it. Um but it, it was cool to see. And I love that R2 was like, hey, build him a bench. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's he gonna might be, be waiting a while. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Luke kind of tends to do this. Yep. Yeah. What did you think, Dre? Uh yeah, I really enjoy it. You know me, like I'm a sucker for Jedi stuff. So anytime we got that and I it was gonna be more than just like one scene, I was like, mm-hmm. oh dope, let's do this. And then of course you see them building it and like it does connect, like Derek said, like, oh, that's the thing that eventually Kylo Ren like loses it in and just we have that scene it, where Luke is like, no, and he's like touching R2 in the episode. And um, yeah, like this is where it all begins. And he actually does build somewhat of the next Jedi Order here before it all it all goes uh, drive us up, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's it was definitely cool to see. And uh to Dan's point here, uh he wrote in the chat and you can do that as well if you watch his live. Just pointing mm-hmm. that out. Uh Dan says, Look, Luke looked. That's hard to say. Luke look looked look, look. much more real this time around. And uh, I love that as well because they literally yeah. hired someone that did like deep fakes better than what like uh Disney could do. So they went and hired yeah. that guy yeah. <laughs> to do the do the deep fake of Luke and everything. And like it it looks so much better. It does look yeah, way better. I did. feel like his audio was a little stunted though, because he would be yeah. like now choose you know like just a yeah. little bit of modulation and it's like i know they probably yeah. got hamill to read and then they like heavily altered it yeah. to make yeah. him sound younger but you know but all in all fantastic thought they did a good job with luke yeah i did i did as well yeah <laughs> and um that i was go ahead uh, amy just says when you're better than disney laugh out loud <laughs> when you're better right. than disney right. you get hired by disney mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah it was like i was wondering are we gonna see it because you know his first appearance at the end of mando season two wasn't you know had a lot to be desired especially with the lip sync lip sync and they showed him he looked really good uh training little baby grogu uh but you know they kept every time he talked they kept cutting away and showing grogu and i'm like is this how they fix the lip sync issue is just by not showing him talk but yeah. then as we get to like later on in the episode with him training in the forest you they do show his mouth moving and it wasn't bad like to trace point it does sound very robotic it almost found sounds like they brought hamill in to read some lines and then pulled some from like old the old star wars movies and kind of spliced them together to sound like very robotic and very like J- boxed in you know but um it, overall he had a great appearance 
in this. There was a lot of heavy stuff that he dealt with that mm-hmm. we'll get into in a little yep. bit, but hit the overall like CGI ness of it was done a lot better than Mando season two finale. You know, like for me, guys, y'all know how harsh I am on so many things like in this in Star yeah. Wars and everything. You? Me, Never. yeah, I know. But I will have to say, like them being able to bring Luke back. Like even yeah. if the if the audio is a little stunted at times, like I'm all for it. Like it looks and sounds like as good as we possibly can without getting someone to be Luke completely without Mark Hamill being involved. So like we would never allow that to happen. No, we we would literally burn down yeah. Disney World. Like we would yeah. we would yeah. like find the cryogenic head and like put it on a pike and like run around screaming, bring back Mark Hamill. Like we would be that kind of people. Uh, you we know, would. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I think we it, have long memories. Yeah, we have long <laughs> memories and short tempers. <laughs> <laughs> um, but even though I will say that uh Give Sebastian Stan a chance. Though. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I will say, uh, give him a chance. Yeah, I wanted, like, even Mark Hamill has said, like, I'd be down for that. I'd be down for Sebastian Stan being, you know, me. Because he, he does look very similar to young Mark Hamill. Yeah. So. But, um, yeah, I definitely like it. And um, got some comments in here I, I want to definitely bring in. Uh, Brandon says during the parkour parkour running, you can see the CGI fell on Luke's face and see the deep fake, Um, you know, like it's hard because like there is an actor literally portraying it. And the actor was the other X-Wing pilot in the last episode. That's the guy that the the younger one. Yep. That's who. Okay. No, it's the the older like. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, (laughs) That would be hilarious. Like him just like doing all the jumps and everything. (laughs) Yeah. Um. And Amy said, yeah, uh, Hamill's voice is much scruffier now. So, like, there is a lot of post-processing that's, you know, and he's a voice actor, so he can also do a lot of those things himself. But there is going to be age on his voice for sure. Um, Yeah. But let's move on. You know, we saw, like, the training and everything. But the scene that was the most interesting to me in this first part with Grogu and Luke was him bringing back memories, like opening up his memories and everything. And then it was like, hey, Grogu, you remember when you were traumatized? Let's relive that right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what I was about to say. It's like, of all the things you could, you chose to bring back, you chose, like, PTSD for this for this little boy. <laughs> like, why? Why would you do that to him? And then it's like, you just see, like, all of these clone troopers just mowing down Jedi. And he's just like... <laughs> Just seeing all of this. I maintain, I have a theory on this. I maintain that, you know, Luke at this point is almost obsessed with his father. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You you know, so he's like, I turned him at the last minute, but he died. And yeah, I saw him as a force ghost at the end and he looked way younger because that's now the, the preferred ending. But, you know, I never got to like know about him. So he was like. You were there, young one. Let me peer into your mind. You know, like, I was like, right. mm. I think Luke was trying to get a glimpse of Anakin, and he just, ooh, I think he overstepped a boundary there. Yeah, what would have been interesting is if we saw Anakin, like, like he does it again, and then we see, like, Hayden Christensen, like, in there, and just mowing down oh. people. Like, I think that would oh. be... You know what scene it is. You get a very low to the ground angle and you see the back of a kid's head. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then it's, yeah. it's just Anakin mowing down young yeah. all over again. Yeah. Like, I, I think that would be very interesting to see. I don't know if they'll do it. I'm curious. I'm curious. Who saved him? Who's... No, that's what bothers me. I yeah you know I I saw Star Wars theory I didn't watch the video but uh, he thinks that the librarian uh, saved Grogu Ooh, so I mean, yeah that would make sense I've seen some people go out on a long far out limb and say it was Anakin who saved him I'm like why would he why yeah. that doesn't make any yeah. sense yeah no. but you know I, I'm just a logical sane person right right you you make too much sense we don't do that here yeah yeah we, um. I do. Th- I mean, we'll probably get that answer in either Mando season three or Ahsoka, I feel like. So, I mean, especially like we'll get into it later. But if they continue to do this style of, 
universe building, we'll probably see those characters intersect in the other shows coming forward too. But you know, we'll get we'll get answers for sure. It's just yeah. a matter of when, not if. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. And uh Marilyn says Allie and I are guessing that uh, the person who saved Grogu was Boba. I'm curious where that comes from but i'm i'm not 100 yeah. for sure because like he still would have been a kid at this point um at, yeah at, all at this, least a teenager yeah he was he still have been pretty young so i i'm not 100 sure on that um ahsoka would have remembered grogu if she did save him yeah 100 you know yeah. i think that you know pretty easy Checks out yeah pretty Plus, easy. don't we know where she was when order 66 went into effect yeah she was on uh one of the carriers yeah uh, she wasn't yeah. even on she yeah. wasn't even on alder uh not alderaan but but uh, she was yeah she wasn't even on coruscant so we're fairly certain 99.9 yeah. percent that it was not her yeah. yeah yeah so i i it had to be somebody in the temple it had to be definitely somebody yeah. in the temple uh, that would have saved him and everything. But one thing that was cool, uh, Amy pointed out, um, and this is, of course, is from the song, uh, I Can Be a Backpack While You Run. Uh, and like seeing seeing Luke yeah. carry Grogu on his back. Oh, yeah. my God. It was like, like yes. being a kid again. <laughs> like, yes. It plucked all my heartstrings at one time. Yep. I was like, oh, I saw I had to do it. <laughs> when, I, when I saw him do it, I'm like, you got to do a flip. You got to do a flip. And he did it. I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can do a backpack while I, I can do a flip flat while I run. Like, right. it was just so, so good. Um, but yeah, love the training and everything. But then we see Mando wake up and. If you didn't have enough cameos already in this show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then we see Ahsoka there. And I was like, yeah i was like boba fett the book of boba fett has just jumped the shark like this is right. like yes. where is the fawns like where's the shark like we've already we've already right. went into this like place and I, I was just like okay like i'm just gonna i'm just gonna enjoy this as an episode i'm not gonna enjoy this yeah. as like like i had to throw that out after last I, I was like this is no longer a series this is just episodic yeah at this point yeah and this is just telling a big if, story yeah yeah would you wonder if this is the, what they're wanting to do going forward anyway yeah and like i'm fine with just like episodes like telling a full story don't package yeah. it at a, a serialized thing but anyway i digress right. Uh, we see Ahsoka, we see Mando talking. He wants to, you know, see the baby. He wants to give him uh, his foundling uh, presence and everything. And Dan pointed out, he was like, I, he's like, how can that whole spear make just that little chain mail? And I, I think it was just the, the, the point of the spear, the tip of the spear yeah. that was yeah. made out of that. So, um, but what did y'all think of like Ahsoka's like, talk with mando it's like it's already hard enough for grogu to stay here yeah. he misses you extremely like you can either yeah you'll you'll continue to distract him even more yeah you can make this harder for him or yeah you can just give this to me to make it you know make this easier on him well and it's interesting that they go like so i, I read this uh earlier today that brings up a good point it's like Luke was trained for all of five minutes um, on how to be a Jedi. So he's learning as he goes, but somehow he goes, he, he knows about this non-attachment pact that the Jedi did in the prequels. You know, mm -hmm. that was a major phone. Like he knows this and it's like, all of a sudden he's bringing this back up. Like I get where they're going because, you know, Grogu is still a child. It'd be one thing if he was like an adolescent or like becoming into an adult where he's already had like an established relationship and now he's got to focus on his future. But you know, Grogu's still a kid and he's still, he still doesn't know what to expect. He doesn't even know how to jump. Like he barely can waddle <laughs> at this point. Like, and you're expecting him to just basically not understand. It's like, Oh, you're my dad. And it's like, you, you've been with me for how long, at least two seasons. And all of a sudden I'm supposed to just like give you up. Like mm -hmm. I, that, well, there's a scene toward the end uh, uh, that we'll get to of, of that whole training uh, sequence, uh, but it's just like, bro, this this feels like very scummy to me. Like, I get it, but it's like, it ain't right. It don't sit right with me. Yeah, my whole thing with Ahsoka was, you know, when she showed up in Mando, she was like, the Jedi are a thing. 
but I don't yeah. care. I got my own thing going on. Like, she is obviously, and this seems to be, like, widely accepted among the fandom, that she is the first of the new canon gray Jedi. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, that's what she's doing. You know, she's gone white lightsaber. She's like, I do what I want when I want. I don't care. Um, I'm not a, a, a puppet and all those different kinds of things. So w- my big thing was, why do you care? Yeah. yeah. Why, why do you care? You know, why, she's yeah, like, you you'll, you'll, you'll throw off his training. And even Mando, like, called her out. Uh, Din Djarin was like, was, um, you said you wouldn't train him, but you're down for somebody else? And she goes, yeah, because I can't uh, tell people how to live their lives, essentially. And I'm like, bull crap. Right. Well, you are so right. full of it right yeah. now. You just didn't want to train him because you were going after your other Mark. Like, let's be honest here. Yeah. You know? Which, she very much takes after Anakin because if you remember when Clone Wars, the animated show started, Anakin didn't want a Padawan because he's like, I'm still learning. I have my own things I want to do. I don't have time for this. And Ahsoka's kind of taking a page from his book and being like, I've got my mission to serve. I don't have time to be worrying about who, what other people are doing. Well, let's be yeah. honest. Ahsoka at the beginning, like who would want to be her master? <laughs> like you know, it, it was it was uh, it was bad at the beginning, but you know, Filoni turned right. it around for sure. Uh, you could tell, you could tell Obi Wan was like, "Whoo, that's that bullet." Yeah, he was like, "Whoa, yeah. <laughs> Cody, let's get out of here, Cody. Let's go have a drink <laughs> while, while this is happening." <laughs> and glad I'm not Anakin. Yeah, exactly. Like. For me, okay, like I had been talking to Amy about this, about how in the EU version, like Luke had a wife, he had a kid, he trained his niece and nephews, like all of these things, like he had attachments and it wasn't an unhealthy thing. That was something, you know, like the dogmatic views of the Jedi in the, you know, the Republic area, like really like helped crumble and mess up the Jedi. Um, you know, mm-hmm. like to a certain degree, yeah, that's what, you know, it's fine and everything, but it was like just so stringent and everything. And it was like, okay, you had one Jedi that, you know, didn't follow the code and guess what? Everybody died because of it. Yeah. <laughs> like it was one Sith guy was like, Hey, you know, uh, what if we did this? You know, we can bring her back for, to life. You know, yeah, we, we yeah. call it Sith necromancy. It's yeah. quite awesome. Actually. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Have you heard the tale of Darth Plagueis the Wise? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It was just like, <sighs> so. Yeah, like I was hoping for that, but we're I seem I feel like we're getting just like the the same stuff, and you know it's it's what people know, but it's like we could have brought something totally new and something totally different. Well, I yeah. I, I don't think all is lost for that, um, because I really feel that. Um, Old man Luke, like when he trains um, uh, Ben Solo, he's 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 obviously forming attachments. He even trains his sister in the way of the Jedi. You don't mm. do that if you're like, nope, attachments are bad. Mm. What I think is going to happen, and this is my official prediction for what's going to be a thing. Grogu, because I might be jumping, but later on, Grogu is given a choice. Yeah. yeah. Can we jump to that? Is that okay? Sure, yeah, we can fine. jump to that. All right, so Grogu our show at, like. <laughs> well, I just wanted to check. I mean, you know, I I, mm. I will punish you later. I will admonish you later. Fine, <laughs> fine. <laughs> uh, but anyway, at the end, you know, Mando gives him the thing, and uh, Luke lays it out. He goes, "Your friend, the Mandalorian, wanted you to have this," and sure enough, it's a Beskar chain shirt, a cool little chain yeah. shirt, and mm-hmm. you can tell Grogu's like. Ah, uh, yes, I am a Mandalorian. Um, but then he's like, but I also Hold on, have behind door this. number two. And he pulls the worst ace card ever. Mm-hmm. He pulls out yeah. Master Yoda's lightsaber. Yeah. Which, let's be honest, yeah. that thing is an artifact. You don't just give that to a youngling because he's no. big, small, and has, has big ears, okay? Come on. Just because he looks like him. Right, come on. That's pretty racist. But anyway. <laughs> 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 so you you then, said it, I thought it though. <laughs> yeah. I, I, was, I don't care. <laughs> um what are they gonna do? Kick me off the internet? Anyway. 
So he's basically like, you can choose the chain shirt, and but you will go back to your Mandalorian friend and live yeah. that life. But if you choose the lightsaber, I will train you as a Jedi. You mm. cannot pick both. And that's when it kind of it cuts out, and there's a lot of stuff we got to go back to in between. Yeah. But it was just sort of like, no. So this is what I think is going to happen. Grogu, because, you know, Luke's kind of cocky right now. He thinks, obviously, he will pick the lightsaber and be a Jedi. Yeah. Why would you not want to be a Jedi? Yeah. I think Grogu's going to be like, this is the way. Give me my shirt. You right. know? And then he's going to bounce. And then Luke's going to be like, why did he pick Ow. the Mando over his people? Yeah. And I think that's going to oh. kind of kick some stuff into gear for Luke. And he's going to be like, yeah. maybe this isn't right. Maybe <laughs> you this know? is not the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe right. his way is better. And, <laughs> yeah. And, and you know, and it just. A... You go ahead, Zach. I was just going to bring up a comment real quick. Uh, Brandon says, I don't like Luke making him choose. It, it was kind of crappy. Right. It was one of those it was very crappy. crappy. Yeah. Which is what I was going to go into. Like, when you see him show the chainmail shirt, you're like, oh, this is about to be a very wholesome scene. And then he's like, actually, you can only you can only choose one option A or option B. If you like your training, it's like and he does this on purpose. Like he gets Grogu to learn how to jump, how to do all this with the force and whatnot. And then he's like, Grogu's like, ah, this is kind of cool. I'm actually liking what, I, what I'm learning here. And then he's like, oh, you can get something, a present from your father or you could continue to train with me. The choice is yours. You can only have one. And I'm like, what a jerk. Yeah. Like, this is very much like not tasteful Luke Skywalker. Yeah. And like a good teacher, it's like, okay, giving you this is not going to pull you away from the Jedi. You know, it yeah. is going to show you that someone cares and loves for you. He could literally have both. He could have his cake and eat it too and still be a part of the Jedi and have the protection of the Mandalorians. It's bringing two of the most rivaled groups out of the Star Wars universe together. Like literally Grogu yeah. could be the thing that keeps the Jedi and the Mandalorians from going to another war and all this crazy stuff yeah. that's happened time and time again. Look at the old Republic like it's over and over and over again so mm -hmm. it's it's interesting so in other words what you're saying is you can bring balance yep yep well you know who likes balance in the force uh <laughs> real quick i want to i want to bring this uh this, this comment up amy says just thinking about the honor it is for luke to teach another of yoda's kind got me in the heartstrings and i yeah. i feel like luke is kind of pushing it's like hey you know, Master uh, Yoda talked like this. You, you should totally talk like this. And like, <laughs> like you, you know what I mean? It's like, dude, chill out. Like he doesn't have to. Uh, he doesn't. Have, he doesn't have to talk about <laughs> talk like that. He can, it it, yeah. it made me wonder if at this point Luke can't see the Force ghosts anymore. Mm. Oh, you know, because when he That's finally shows push. back up in Episode Nine. <clears throat> Yoda, like the very first thing he says is, Missed you, I have Skywalker. And it makes you wonder how long has he not. Because we just yeah. assume it's because he's disconnected from the Force. Yeah. But we right. all know that's bull. You don't fully, you don't yeah. disconnect from the Force. No. I mean, that's not how that works. Yeah. So it makes me wonder if this goes way further back than we thought. And he's like, and like you said, this is another of Yoda's species. Luke was under the impression that these people were gone from existence. Yeah. Utterly gone. So now here's this unique opportunity. I need you to remember how to be this species and bring back the wisdom of your ancestors. And Grogu's like, can I just hunt for frogs? Yeah, which I thought that was like, <laughs> that was an awesome scene where yeah. like Luke was like, if you focus and you train, you literally could have all of this. <laughs> like, it's not that hard, yeah. but you have to focus and train. Uh, Amy says, I didn't think yep. it was that aggressive. I think it was just wanting Grogu to remember, like, remember, like, you know, Master Yoda, which I'm sure at some point he ran into Master Yoda in the temple because he had to, because had to. Yoda was all yeah. about the younglings, like teaching the younglings and bringing Love them up. the younglings. So like, I'm sure at some and you point, can't tell me he wasn't going to go visit the one of his species 
Japanese. Oh, yeah. You know, they're like, oh, by the way, Grandmaster oh, yeah. Yoda, we found a youngling that's force sensitive and he's your species. And he's like, out of my chair, I'm getting. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, what is this? He's like, I don't have a species. No one ever gave us a name. <laughs> exactly. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting where they're going with this. I'm wondering, you know, in Brandon even brought up Luke does ask if Grogu can even talk. I'm wondering if he's so traumatized that the only way he can talk is through the force. Yeah. You know, maybe. so that that's, that's where we can be, but let, let's move on. We, we, we're not even out of the first. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm telling you, well, we kind of did all of one thing. Yeah, now we can yeah. do all the other. Yeah. yeah. So Mando, he decides to leave and give the gift to Ahsoka, which later on, Luke gives him the choice and everything, but then we get the the Luke yeah. training Grogu montage here. Uh, the remote droid, I love that it had the same sound effect yes. that it was in episode yes. four. Um, and I was like, I, I said to Amy, I looked at her, I was like, you know, like, I was like that thing like shoots and everything, and Amy was like, Luke's not gonna do that to Grogu, and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and this is like, Pow! <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> like i was like okay but then we start seeing him move like master yoda flipping and jumping i'm like yeah, yeah. this is so awesome you know and learning the balancing and all of these cool things and like it is it's a really cool scene but something that i love that they did at the end of this like whole montage um was showing grogu just like wiped out like he literally just like lays on a rock he like yeah. destroys the yeah, remote yeah. droid and he's like all right i'm done he's like i'm taking a nap, nap time. <laughs> <laughs> you got any more okay cool I'm, I'm i'm zoning out for a minute peace yeah yeah what did y'all think about this whole montage sequence oh yeah just dope <laughs> like i loved every minute of it i was not mad at anything about it no. and i was just like yes more yes more mm, you know yes. like, <laughs> like well a, and, and and something that um go ahead i was just gonna say like uh kylo ren's like more more, yeah. more! <laughs> that's enough more <laughs> he's literally dead more <laughs> Um, it's like the scene in Family Guy where Peter's playing uh, blackjack and he's like, hit me, Peter, you're 19, hit me. <laughs> hit me. <laughs> That's <funny>. um, <laughs> <laughs> But uh, another, uh, during this whole montage scene, though, we get a conversation with Luke and Ahsoka mm -hmm. and Ahsoka brings up, he's like, you're just like your father in that way. I'm like, oh man, like she still is like separating Vader from Anakin yep. and it's still like holding onto that part that was her master and like bringing this up openly to Luke. And I, part of me wanted to like Luke to like, like, like keep going with that conversation. Like, oh, I, I don't remember, remember much of my father except when I had to kill him, you know? Um, but you know, it's like, what else did you learn about him? Like, I, I didn't want like a full blown, like 10 minute conversation, but I wanted it just a little bit more. But the fact that she still acknowledges like, hey, I still adore your father. It was a nice little touching moment. Yeah, yeah. I, I love that moment. I thought it was really cool, uh, you know, and you also got like Luke, Luke not really wanting to do this alone. He was wanting guidance from Ahsoka. He was yeah. wanting Ahsoka to stay around as well. He was like, you know, it's like, do you really have to leave? Like, when, you know, will I see right. you again? It it really opens up the question. It's like Ahsoka has actually been trained. She was in the Jedi Temple. Yes, it, a lot of it was like during the Clone Wars, but she had that training. Mm hmm. Yeah. And she's just got experience and wisdom on him in spades, man. Oh, yeah. Like he's like two, maybe even three times as old as Luke is at this point. Cause you know, yeah. she was like 13 when she became mm -hmm. Anakin's, uh, uh, Padawan and then went through all of the clone yep. wars, which we know are like, you know, decades. Yeah. So yeah, yeah she's, she knows a lot, a yeah. lot, a lot. Yeah. And she's seen some things. Yeah, and even like her time with the rebellion, and you know, like having all of that experience and that leadership experience and everything, like we, she has a lot in there. And um, Amy said, "I just love seeing them together." You it know? was nice. It, it, yeah, like I wasn't sure we were going to get that at all, but it was definitely cool. It was, like I looked at Amy, and I was like, "They know each other." Like th they know each other. That was such a huge yeah. thing. I was like, she literally yeah. knows 
two Skywalkers. Of course, like she probably knows Leia as well, but it's like she knows Anakin and Luke. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she probably also sees a lot of the pride that controlled Anakin's life in Luke because Luke at this stage in his life is strong headed. Like, Oh yeah. No doubt about it. And like this, the, you know, we're talking about the choices and everything. It reminds me of when Luke and the EU was building the Jedi and he made assumptions and literally like had one of his own students like consumed by the dark side. And he like just erupted in, you know, into dust because like he, he just didn't see the warning signs. Yeah. So wow. I'm, I'm wondering if we're going to be getting that sort of like kind of strong headed, um, luke in this in this show so maybe well only time will tell mm-hmm. and brandon even chimed in he said she has she even has a lot of the wisdom from yoda yeah like she looked up to yoda yeah. up until you know he was like yeah i'm not gonna help you out of this hairy situation we throw you that, into the clink oh. yeah that one cut deep when she was like uh and he's like no and you're like Jacuz Yoda. <laughs> yeah, I know, dude. That those like three episodes, especially when she left. Oh my god, Ooh. I cried like yeah. a baby. Oh, mm, I cried like a baby. Um, <laughs> Amy said there was a lot of satisfying things in this episode that I didn't know I wanted but got, and I one hundred percent agree. One hundred percent agree. Uh, like there were so many things, but getting back to Mando, because we're still in the Mandalorian apparently, uh, and not the book of Boba Fett, <laughs> um, Mandalorian arrives on Tatooine. And I love that the, the Gamorrean was like, you're not going to pass. And he's like, Oh, Fennec Shan. He's like, Oh, Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 it's like, he's just like bare chested. And this guy's like all yeah. in best car. He's, he's like, I'm going to take this guy out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what you want to see in your Gamorrean guards. Dedication to the job. Yeah. Right. It's like seeing like a big like WWE wrestler like Goldberg come up in this like skinny little pencil neck kid being like at the door being like, hold on, sir, where are you going? It's like, bro, yeah. step back. And then we finally get to see Boba Fett in this episode. And uh it's Finnick Shan. Like Bo, I don't even think Boba says anything in this episode. I think it's all just no. Finnick just no talking lines. about what's going on and we already know all of these things and we get the power rangers we get uh, yep chrysanthemum in there my boy black chrysanthemum yeah and then we get the the nod it's like hey and then boba's like hey i think i can find some muscle for y'all yeah it's like we need foot soldiers now we have enough big heavy hitters but we need foot soldiers now we need we need um um body body shields meat shields at this point it's like yeah i can help with that yeah you know, it's like we ju- we just need you know half warm bodies. You know, the sun could literally like right. be warming the body. Um, <laughs> so Mando goes meets Cobb Vanth, the marshal, uh, and tries to convince him to convince the town to come fight for Boba Fett. And we find out that it is it's changed. The name has changed to the town. It's now Freetown because uh, yeah. they free. Um, and, yeah. and then it was just like, yeah, I, like, I don't think so. We're square. And then Mando's like, but it's not going to just stay here. It's going to come this way. Yeah, exactly. And it goes back to what was shown He's at like, the beginning. Think, have... Right. And, 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 and he realizes this, like Cobb Vanth is not an idiot. Like he just had this, he, they're already in his territory. And mm-hmm. once Boba's like, like, I, oh no, excuse me. Mando is like, he beats enough. He beats that thought into his head enough to where he's like, you know what? We may have to have a town meeting, guys. Like, it, it's definitely like, it takes on a Western thing where it's like you go to recruit them. It's like, nah, it's not my problem. Um, and then you, they, it, it, the the person who asks them for a favor leaves, and they're like, ah, I think we have to help them. You yeah, know, it's, it's probably our, our problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. And uh, Brandon says, I love how the marshal knew what ship he had. Like when he landed, in the deputies like, yeah. you got to move that, and he's like. No. <laughs> again, a, which, again, what's up with these young bucks thinking James they're just going to go up? No. What was it? That, that looked a lot like James Marston. James Marston. The deputy. 
No. Yeah. The guy who played uh, Cyclops from the. I don't know. I he thought, I thought like it was him. Sean from uh, Psych. <laughs> I, that took, like when it first, I was oh. like, "Oh my God, James Rode is in this show!" I'm like, "This is so <laughs> awesome! I love him!" And I was like, and I looked at Amy. I was like, "Is that Sean?" And she's like, "I thought the same thing, but unfortunately, it was not Sean." Um, uh, I'm not sure if it was the other guy that you just again. Heard. Mando's like, "I just need to see the marshal." He goes, "Move the," and he's like, <laughs> <laughs> and "You know, Mando's like, what is up with these idiots thinking they can just right. swear up to me?" <laughs> good help's hard to find these days is it he's, yes. like, he's like i got the gamorian <laughs> cause like doing this crap now i got this <laughs> this backwater joker over here and all of this so mando leaves and then we see this silhouette walking Woo! And I, all i had to do was see the duster and i'm like it's my boy yeah the duster and the hat and i, and I told i looked at amy I immediately knew i was like that's cad bane I was like, that's Cad Bane. Yeah, Cad freaking Bane, man. I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I was uh, I was worried I wasn't going to have time to watch it because I had some stuff to do after work, and I got a student teacher. So uh, I was like, hey, you can teach this one, and I kid y'all not. I'm over there at my desk watching the watching <laughs> Book of Boba. And I'm like, like any responsible teacher does. <laughs> Very responsible. And I kid you not, like, when, when I saw the silhouette, I literally went... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, all the kids are like, what? Like, what happened? Like, nothing, nothing. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it's it what I wanted because me. you know, it did. And you know, when, when we when the show was announced, we were like, all right, what bounty hunters aren't going to show up in here? Like Black Crescenton was definitely a surprise, and I end up loving him, like him. And now we got a live action Cad Bane, mm -hmm. and they still got the guy, the voice actor who voiced him in the animated series, to come and still do his voice. And I'm like, that that's him. Yes. Yeah. And he looked really good. Like I was worried about how they were going to look. Like his fingers looked a little weird when he held up the gun, but you know, he overall I loved his look. But he looks actually scary now. Mm -hmm. Like Cad yes. Bane in the in the animated, it was like, yeah, he's kind of cool looking. Like I could see yeah. how people would be like, that guy is, you yeah. know. But live action, he looks like a freaking demon, guys. Yeah. Like he's got yeah. the teeth and the eyes and all that. Especially stuff. when he looks up and like the oh. brim of his hat like uh, lifts up, and you see his eyes. Like all right, <laughs> yeah, like you see like the all the hardware on his face and everything. I wish he was a little bit darker blue. Like that would have matched yeah. a little bit more. But like it looked dope. And uh, Amy says. Uh, we got that on stream tray, so uh, now we're going to blackmail you. That's fine. I like Cad Bane. You don't bother me. Man. Are you talking about me talk yeah. watching Star yeah. Wars at work? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to do fire me, and then I have to get a job that doesn't cause me tons of amounts of stress. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Amy said his teeth. Yeah, like his teeth were... <sighs> were uh, that boy needs that he need, he needs some dentures or something like he he needs some help <laughs> like he's like, hang, hang, yeah. Hang, hang. but uh yeah. yeah it looked great and then uh I I was like oh, man stupid deputy over there like he's gonna get everybody That's killed you, that freaking idiot walked out of the bar and I was like and even 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 Cobb was like go back in the bar what are you doing like when they were on the standoff like Cobb was like. Like he like he was almost like taking his eyes off of Cad to look at him like, yeah. hey dummy, stop, stop. And then like he shoots Cobb once and then he just unloads on the deputy. He was like, what? This is what you get for me. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> oh. This is what which, you get. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which you have to believe, right? That Cobb is not dead. Like he got oh, shot yeah, once yeah. and it looked like from it was like in the if shoulder. you slowed that down. Yeah, yeah, I was about to say, it grazed his shoulder. shoulder. And they wouldn't have spent the time, like, get a medic, get him a med kit, you know, whatever. whatever. They would not have called that out if there was not a chance he was still alive. I've noticed they swarm uh, Cobb, and no one says anything about that stupid deputy. Right. No one says like, about the deputy. They're like, oh, no, Marshall's been shot once. Right. <laughs> They're like, he brought it on himself. Let him die. Really? He just, bam, 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 bam. Like, I'm going to go back and watch how many times he <laughs> shot that guy, but it was a lot. <laughs> like... <laughs> 
probably four at least at least four times yeah it, it was like you know when you get to the the boss battle like the final boss battle and you hate the guy and it's like you get done and you just keep just shooting the 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 body of the the bad guy it's like that's what it was like he was like uh but what was interesting amy brought this up when we were watching it she was like how did he know how did cad bane know about the marshal's armor and I'm like, well, Cad Bane never yeah. goes unprepared. Like he's always, he like he always knows. knows. Like he he always does intel and everything. And I love that they brought that into the show as well. Yeah. <clears throat> mm-hmm. So it was it was yeah. great. It was definitely great. Um, and they even nailed his uh, personality. I thought really well. Like he's very calm. He's like, I'm here to deliver a message. Stay out of the way, and there won't be trouble. And the moment it goes, someone like speaks out of turn. He's like, I will murder your entire family. I'm Cad freaking. <laughs> you know, like he just goes zero to a hundred real quick. Yeah. And that's why homeboy got shot all those times. It reminds me of. Uh, <laughs> I've been watching Naruto, uh, Shippuden. So sorry, like anytime like someone like interrupts him or wastes his time, he's like, I'm gonna kill you now. <laughs> it's just like the <laughs> same thing with Cad Bane. It's like exactly. he's like, exactly wasting right. my time now. <laughs> yep. I, I miss I'm trying to look cool. Yeah. <laughs> I missed his little robot companion that like flew around and like made all the jokes in yeah. the Clone Wars, but yeah. they did an awesome, yeah. awesome job. Uh Dan says I wonder if he had something under his shirt like Marty McFly in Back to the Future. Talking about uh, Cobb. Maybe. Oh, maybe. Maybe. Maybe that yeah, that's where I mean, Sheriff so ever since he lost his armor, like he knows he has to be vulnerable. So yeah. you got to think he's prepared. Yeah, 100%. And then we get, uh, because we already talked about the very ending, we get the Pikes visiting Master Garza. She's the uh, Twi'lek that has the, um, like, the cantina, the club, and everything Mm -hmm. uh, with the present. And we think, I I was under the impression that they were going to try to buy her off because they have one of the the ice cream uh, machines bringing it in there and everything. I'm like, oh, they're going to try to buy her off and everything. And then... And then we, they leave. They like they, they order, and then they just start walking away. And I'm like, okay, maybe mm-hmm. they're just like leaving the money there. And then it was just like, nope, nope, not that's what nope, happened. Nope, <laughs> no, nope, hey. nope. And, and I called it too as soon as I got up. I'm like, hmm, they don't have the canister. That's a freaking bomb. And sure enough, like I hope. Garza's not dead because I feel like they tried to establish her too much as a character in the show to just immediately be like, bye, you're done. Like, she had too much intrigue. Like, how much power does she have? Like, I feel like they're going to they're gonna write it out to make it to where she survived, barely, but she survived. Like, that's my hope. Because she was I standing see right more. next to that bomb when it went off. Like, that droid was right behind her. <laughs> yeah. If she does survive... She's gonna have some um like some mech parts now because yeah. oof and she ain't gonna be this beautiful den of iniquity madam yeah. anymore and she's yeah. gonna be bitter. She's gonna be a terminator. Oh, is she gonna be so mad. I I think the reason why they really built her up is because of who she is in real life. Uh like she's like the lady from flash dance and all of that like she's yeah a oh. bigger actress and everything so i definitely think it's more of and to get that. a three episode part you yeah. know yeah for sure um but yeah like that was a huge thing it was like because she she's been seen talking to boba fett many many times uh she even you know warned boba fett about a few things paint him off like i always thought she was just mm-hmm. like frou-frouing him off and everything uh but like the pikes are like hey even that person you talked to him once you did everybody everybody, you talked you looked at him you sniffed his cologne you're dead like your mama's dead your granny's dead your dog oh you look at him (laughs) merch yeah gone (laughs) so like they're they're not they're not playing they're not playing at all um i definitely let me uh yeah okay amy put in a question a little bit earlier uh i wanted to ask both of y'all what would make the show satisfying for you guys as far as the expectations you had, at least from this point on? So what is something like wrapping up the season? Cause we got one episode left. What would yeah. make everything just like wrap up really well for y'all as your expectations for the show? Um, so for me, and this is kind of like, we kind of, you and I talked about this yesterday, Zach, after you'd watched the episode, 
this is the problem I have, like, going forward, like, when you, this is the, like, we don't see this necessarily with the MCU, but, you know, this is the first time they're trying to build an extended universe, like, live action with Mando. We've got one episode left, you're pretty much guaranteed, like, they're gonna, they're gonna take out, they're gonna reclaim Boba Fett's territory in the, in the finale, and then it's gonna set up for a bigger war in, in season two. Like, you gotta imagine there's gonna be a season two in this. Um, and you also gotta expect, because... Uh, blah, blah, blah. Cad Bane said something interesting. He didn't say the Pikes. He said the Syndicate, which makes which raises the question: Is is it bigger? The, are the Pikes involved in a bigger, bigger uh, crime ring than we think? And I think that leads to season two, whatever that plot may be. Um, but this is the problem I have. Like we spent two, an episode and a half, almost two episodes of other the extended universe characters that were fleshed out in Mando. I don't want this to be the thing going forward. Like I don't mind other episodes, and that means that we'll these two these episodes that we got are not going to be used as part of the eight episodes in Mando season three, which means it's probably going to make it more epic. That's the only upside. But you know this um, Mandalorian, uh, Boba Fett, and Ahsoka, and presumably the Rangers of the High Republic, if they ever fix They're out whatever's that going on with that. Not, okay, yeah, that was, uh... they're all going to be in a connected universe. They're all going to be in a connected universe. And I hope this is not what it is. Like, I hope when we have Mando season three, are we going to have an episode of Ahsoka and an episode of uh, Boba Fett, what, you know, used in that? And Ahsoka, are we going to have a couple episodes used for that? Like, I don't mind crossovers, but I don't want whole episodes taking uh, taken over that takes away from the overarching plot. And it makes it seem like Boba, the show, is like, oh, we're using him because of star power, but we're not going to actually utilize him, utilize him as a character. We're going to use other characters that you know and make them part of the show. Yeah, definitely. It it, it feels like um, this was just like a jumping off point for other things. Yeah. And it was like, we don't really think that Book of Boba Fett can stand on its own. So we're going to take yeah. these two episodes to really like push the next projects and everything. Um, it, it it's kind of janky in my opinion. Uh, but uh, what I would love to see is a payoff of some sort. Like yeah. you know, uh, like you were saying, the syndicate is it the Pike Syndicate? Is it the Hut Syndicate? Yeah. Like is it the Hut family? Yeah. Like are the Huts really pulling the strings? Like are they just right letting the Pikes come in and they fight and then they just come in and sweep up uh, afterwards? Or do we see the third faction? Yeah, like who who is it? You know, um, are we going to see? the republic step in you know oh. probably not because uh tatooine you know that's not that big of a fish uh in the grand scheme no. of everything but something like i i need to see boba fett pay off in some regards like i need to see him act like boba fett and not yeah a a you know tertiary character really yeah exactly because even Fennec had more f a screen time, it feels like, than Boba has. Yeah, in the last two episodes, she's had more to do with the story yeah. than he has. And, yeah. you know, and Trey, you can kind of go off on this point if you want to. Like, I, you know, reading books and everything, there are chapters where you spin totally away from the main character. I'm thinking about, like, Aragon. You totally yeah. spend time with roaring you know you spend time with ari like there's so many different things that you you jump around from character to character but it's a book like calling your show the book yeah. of boba fett is different than it actually being a book uh where you have yeah. hundreds of pages to really flesh out things in multiple you know books in the series so i'm hoping that you know maybe that was just it it was just us going on you know a chapter of something else. So Trey, what are your yeah. thoughts? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I want to see things pick up, but I've been thinking a lot about this. Why are they so focused on Boba Fett? Why? What is the point? Mm -hmm. What, what is this going to be in the grand scheme of things? And Star Wars lore is always 12 steps ahead. Um, and you make up a good point. Like, why is it called the Book of Boba Fett? Well, this could be a little on the nose, but what do you keep in books? You keep the lore and history of a people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So I would love for, Ed, as this season wraps up, and then we are obviously going to go focus on Mando stuff for a while because we're all ready for season yeah. three and all that stuff. We've already had season 2.5. Um, so we're all ready for that. I think what I would love to see is that this last episode, Bubba wins. Like, Bubba gets mm. Mos Espa. He's the kingpin. He's the guy, and everyone comes around, and they're like, all oh, hell the fet. Um... But we've also learned that he's not a very good crime lord. No. Like, he's he's not. He's actually quite bad at it. So what I would love to see is that he becomes, you know, the the head of whatever, and he gets the piece on Tatooine, and they just start making money. And then season two, all the new factions come in. I think Black Sun would be super cool to pull in on this. Mm, yeah. uh, you know, like, that would be, kind of be like, now you want a war? That's a war. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as a war bring um, in prince Zizor and all of that like. oh yeah exactly so yeah i want all that going on but in the midst of all of that i want boba fett to come across clones mm. oh. i want him to meet the bad batch oh because then all of a sudden you've got clones who don't have a place in the world and one yeah. of them could say, well, you know, technically, you're all Mandalorians. And the Book of Boba Fett could be the start of... And we've already seen that the Mandalorians don't mind having their own factions. Like, you could be the fanatics right. that follow the way. You could be the, the political ones that are trying to just reclaim Mandalore. You could develop your own little inter-Mandalorian culture. I would not be surprised, and actually I would love to see him become, like, the figurehead of a new batch of Mandalorians. Mm -hmm. And it's all these clones that are coming out of the woodwork because he's the prime clone. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's alpha. He's the one. He's alpha. He didn't get altered, you know? So I would love for them to come out of the woodwork and they're like, we follow you because you are this quasi-deity person. And that's why I was kind of thinking, like, why well, call it the Book of Boba Fett if you're not going to talk about this? Well, it's the beginning of a way of belief is what I think. You know, this could be farther, 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 farther on, you know, maybe even just video game and novel territory from here on out. Yeah. But I would love to see him come across some clones and be and they're like. Oh, you're the Boba Fett, you know, you're mm -hmm. you're basically the guy that came from the guy who created all of us. Yeah, yeah. that's what I would love to see, because he's not a good crime lord. That's fine. Don't be a crime yeah. lord. But being the start of a new culture of Mandalorians, maybe. Yeah, you know. So something that I, I, want. I saw, um, I can't remember exactly what it said and everything, but um it was essentially like something about the mythosaur, like the one that rides the mythosaur is like the one that'll bring back the yeah. Mandalorians and everything. Yeah. What is on Boba Fett's shoulder? The, the skull with the, the mythosaur the, skull, the mythosaur skull. Yeah. So what if like everybody's thinking Jin Jarn, like he, like he's like ultimately a follower. He is not a leader. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Like what if Boba Fett is the catalyst for, like you were saying, the Mandalorians coming back around and everything. And uh, Dan even says, like, what if he meets Captain Rex? Like, yeah, that would be oof, dope, oof. you know? That would be real dope. Like, Captain Rex is, like, one of my favorite clones of all times. Uh, yeah. R.I.P. Fives. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, like, you, you could see that happening because, like, he wants a family. Like, Boba Fett is all about family yeah. uh at this point in his life and everything so i i think you know and brandon even brought up this point uh especially uh all the flashbacks showing Django leaving camino and everything and even the tree like the tree is Django fett and all yeah. the branches that came off of him were all of the clones and then you see the right. small tree that's beside him and that was boba fett you yeah. know so you mm -hmm. could definitely you know, see where all of that goes. Uh, Nate says, I shared a video about that in discord about the mythosaur and all of that. Cause I didn't watch it, but, uh, I want to see pictures of the mythosaur. 
it's crazy looking. No. It is crazy, crazy looking. Yeah. Like I could totally see Boba riding one of those things and like having a bunch of other Mandalorians around. They're like, that that's him. That's the guy. <laughs> you know? Well, you know. So yeah, I know that's far fetched, but I would love it. Uh Dan Dan sums all of this up, guys. Boba Toretto. La Familia. <laughs> La Familia. You know, Just means more. You you live your life a quarter mile at a time. Quarter mile at a time. Well, there you go, guys. There is episode six of Boba the Mandalorian, Ahsoka, and Grogu. Headbane. We hope that you enjoyed the show, guys. Let us know down in the comments what you thought. And, guys, thank you, everyone, that has been a part of uh, the show with your comments. Uh, we appreciate it. Always love people being on the show, putting in comments. We might not get them all, but uh, we try to get as much as we possibly can uh, in the show. And yeah. if you want to watch live, you can join us over on twitch.tv slash Nerdcave Network for the finale of Season 1 of book of boba fett let's see what it's going to be guys let's see who's going to yeah. live who's going to die who's going to tell your story this has been zach Derek, and trey y'all have a blessed week bye